Okay, um, let's get going, I guess. Um, hey, everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, Confidential Computing Mini Summit. Um, I think this is for most of us who missed the one in, in San Francisco in July. Um, we've got some good talks here today. Um, uh, I'm doing an intro here. Um, in a few minutes, we'll hear from Dr. Trieflinger on um, Pets of the World Unite. Uh, I think this will be a very interesting topic. Um, uh, Usama will take us through um, his subject matter expertise around attestation um, and uh, teach us about some of the formal specifications. We'll take a quick break then. And then uh, Jen Yu will talk about SecGear, uh, uh, the open Euler native confidential computing framework. This one is new for me, Jen Yu, so looking forward to that. Uh, Nikolai with a, a, a use case deep dive, um, secure and privacy preserving cyber threat and intelligence exchanges is a hot topic at the moment and a, and a very interesting area to, uh, to be working in. The exchange of cyber threat intelligence is absolutely ne uh, a necessity for most uh, government uh, entities, I think around Europe in particular, and uh, confidential computing seems to be a really good area for that. And uh, Josh, who's in the Google uh, research team, uh, done some nice work recently on TDX, I think, as well, right? Um, will talk to us about securing the unseen um, and the research that they're doing inside the confidential computing space. And then we'll wrap up with Mike uh, at the end as well. <coughs> okay, a few words from me, first of all. Um, I think some of you may know me. I'm around the confidential computing space for quite a while now uh, at Intel. And just a couple of things to, to brush over here. Um, I have to go back to see this now. Um, so where we've been successful uh, so far, uh, security, I think we've done a good job on uh, over the last couple of years since we brought uh, SGX to the market and, and recently with the SEV, et cetera. Uh, compliance is a big, strong area for us too as well. Um, I think a lot of us are working in the compliance space now and seeing compliance as a nice uh, tailwind. And control as well. Um, we see uh, data sovereignty as a big thing as well, uh, governance here in Europe as well. And we'll see a lot more announcements, I think, coming on uh, data sovereignty in the next couple of weeks or months even. But we're still in the sort of early adapter stage, I think. Um, and, you know, there's still some good use cases coming, but not enough. But we're starting to see a line of sight here to uh, what I call platform services. And these platform services are things that are, to, are starting to happen on the hyperscalers, like uh, Databricks, uh, analytics, easy to use uh, type of things uh, on hyperscaler services. And we'll see that with Google, I think, a lot more as well, talking to Josh there uh, earlier on. But we still have a lot to do in the awareness space. We simply not, uh, don't have the level of awareness that we have uh, with confidence computing at the moment uh, across the market. And I think this is a problem for us. Raising awareness is an individual and collective responsibility for confidential computing at the moment. In surveys that we've done at Intel, we're seeing very, very poor results from CISOs, uh, DevSecOps, on what confidential, can actually, confidential computing can actually bring uh, from a compliance and security perspective. So this is a collective responsibility that we all have uh, to bring out of infrastructure and into different levels of services uh, across confidential computing. And that really means getting into areas like standards bodies. Um, and this is, I know, from talking to Mike, it's where the CCC will do a lot more work. Uh, policy makers, we're starting to see some good tailwinds come from the likes of ANISA, uh, who are talking and recommending confidential computing as a mechanism for securing data in the cloud. And a lot of this is very much cloud-focused. Um, we've seen others from ICO in the UK, and there's a collection of these now. I know the CCC are in Asia in November, I think. Uh, the Monetar Monetary Authority of Singapore is also recommending confidential computing as a, as a sort of go-to protection uh, for the cloud. Um, customer success stories, we need to keep these coming. Uh, we've had some good ones, um, working with uh, Sven on, on Bosch, for example, showing how we can bring confidential AI to the cloud using Intel SGX. But we need to start driving these. Uh, and again, with the CCC, uh, we're going to get uh, down and dirty on customer success stories and start to bring those things out, even in the concept of a chessboard showing where different uh, use cases can work across different uh, communities. We continue to work with the analysts uh, as well. Um, I think we see a lot of interesting analysis come out of IDC and Gartner. Sometimes it swings one way or the other. Um, but we're talking a lot to IDC and Gartner at the moment about where we are with confidential computing. 
it's not two to five years out, it's here now, people are using it, um, and it's just going to get bigger over the next uh, uh, couple of months. And vertical industry groups, uh, and another area that we need to work on as well, um, uh, around that whole evangelism area. But this is a collective responsibility for all of us right now, we're the ones here that have to drive this forward. So, as we kind of look at what we need to do and where we need to focus our collective energy, usability for me is the biggest barrier that we currently have with confidential computing. Um, the past adoption, uh, the likes of Databricks, um, you know, the likes of um, Datadog, these companies adopting confidential computing is making it easy for enterprises to come along and ultimately get to the point where they can click a box, uh, check a box somewhere, and their workload is deemed confidential. They can get an attestation certificate, and their compliance officers are happy uh, with that. And that means more workloads um, move to the cloud. So with the cloud-native companies like that, um, that's a real uh, nice thing to do. Talking recently to some big enterprises who are cloud-first, you know, they don't know how to spell Kubernetes. They don't do infrastructure anymore. They're, they've no interest in this. They're all in on the hyperscalers. They want confidential computing to be a checkbox exercise. They'll pay more for it, but they, want it. they don't want to manage infrastructure at all. Uh, so cloud first. And as we see with some of the uh, emerging workloads in the cloud, Microsoft's AI, et cetera, is all going to be confidential com computing enabled from day one. Uh, so that's a checkbox exercise and brings confidential computing into the sort of mainstream. Confidence containers remains critical uh, to build this out. Um, you know, uh, ease of portability, uh, potentially even across clouds, uh, etc. Uh, and as I say here, this pass adoption, very, very critical. Usability is uh, a barrier for us at the moment, uh, and everybody working inside of the software elements of confidential computing has to be conscious of this, right? We, we've, got to, we've got to make this right. Edgeless are doing a nice job with, um, with Constellation, for example, to make this easier from a manageability and orchestration perspective. Uh, but we've got to work hard on this. Um, from a hardware perspective, you know, standardized feature discovery uh, is something we're heavily invested in, uh, also with AMD uh, and with ARM as well. And the trusted I.O. roadmap uh, is well on the way. You would have heard from our um, CTO uh, at Intel uh, at OC3 in March or April around our plans to bring out uh, an I.O. roadmap and uh, accelerators to GPUs. Um, and that's going to be critical as we tackle the confidential AI workloads which are going to be critical for, for confidential computing growth over the next couple of years. And workload portability. Most of the customers that we all want have multiple cloud contracts, not just with one cloud, uh, and they want to choose which cloud for which workload, and it's got to look and feel the same for them to do that. Uh, and that's a great opportunity, I think, for some of the uh, startups in this space, is how can we make workload portability easy? At the end of the day, your customer is a DevOps person uh, who should be able to choose which cloud, which workloads go to in an automated sense. And then whole community, um, evangelize to analysts, as I said in the previous slide, this is really important. Wherever you can talk about confidential computing, let's get it out there. Um, we use the CCC as well as a vehicle for that. Seek their advice when you're, when you're talking to people, uh, especially with policymakers, etc. And global penetration. We've got a lot of success in Europe. Europe is leading in confidential computing. Uh, a lot of success coming in the US as well, and you know, US hyperscaler dominance. We're a bit barren in Asia. We need to fix that uh, as well. Uh, Mike and the team are committed to uh, go to Asia and try and bring some uh, you know, knowledge across to Asia. Uh, it's a big area to play in with many, many different regulations. Europe is not the only one with strict regulations, uh, Singapore, etc just as, as strict at this place. So we need, a, we need more penetration in, in Asia generally. Um, and lastly, confidential computing is a privacy enhancing technology. Whether we like it or not, it is playing in that space right now. Um, it's a strong, strong player in the privacy enhancing technology space. But it's not the only one in that space. And as Sven will talk about in a few minutes, in order to bring the most robust privacy solutions, in some cases, we need to partner with other privacy enhancing technologies, uh, especially MPC. Um, and we're already seeing work with uh, Infer have announced you know, their adoption of confidential VMs on Azure to strengthen their, um, their pla ExoWar platform uh, on uh, Azure uh, for their customers and use the concept of attestation, all right? So the, the concept that their cloud or that their customers can get an attestation certificate guaranteeing the veracity of the environment that they're running in. And that's a pretty powerful combination with, with MPC as well. 
um, I'll let Sven cover more on that. Um, and others will come as well. Uh, a lot of the, the key NPC players are now looking at um, how they can use technologies like TDX or AMD SCV uh, for that extra piece of robust. So this is the work we have to do. This is the area that we have to focus on. We've done an awful lot of work on infrastructure uh, and other areas like that over the years. But we've got to bring it above the infrastructure layer, get usability in there, continue on the hardware roadmap that we all garner together, and bring this whole community, uh, including the Confidential Computing Consortium, into uh, a tailwind uh, and use this success to, to drive it forward as well. As I say, we're not there yet. Uh, we're still working to get there. Uh, the future's bright, I think. Okay, that's it for me. Um, thank you.